Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're gonna work a little bit more of record and as well clean up a little bit of the code. Alright so let's just get started and let's assemble my game just to show you guys the issues that we have. Here is player 1 and if I should bring all the way up to between the uh, player and core you see there's this gap between the player 1 and the core so I want to fix that. And if we were to bring player two, notice that this gap is way more pronounced. So we want to fix that. So that's going to be an easy part. And the next part, as you see over here, which, let me bring my arrow over here. Under this, oh, here it is up here. So under this arrow, you, you see the number 176. And that represents the total number of frames. If I come over here, see, is there, is there a scan line? This is going to be a frame. So if I were to one frame over here, that's 176. That's the number of frames that we have. As you notice, it keeps skipping between one to, I mean, 175 to all the way to 176, and we're gonna fix that. Uh, so let's just get started. And the first one is pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna change over here is the video delay from player one to zero. And for just sample over here and bring my player one, player two over here. Let me see if I can align it. Well, let me just manually do this. Okay, player 85 and 83. So this 83 is one knee, so 20. That's one frame. So here it is. So it's aligned perfectly. As you see, there is no gap between player one and player two. So that's working. And let's just go to the main part of your crow. And to fix this gap, that's pretty easy. All we're gonna do is have this play field data over here, have an instruction. And just paste it right over here on the draw player to draw graphics player one. That's the part. Let me comment this play field so we know where to put put it over here so that's pretty easy so if I were to oops uh, oh of course not over here over here play field right after our straw graphics player one run it and you see there's no gap anymore so that was pretty easy and let me just come here and save it. So now let's jump over to the next part of your code, which is this extra frame that we have in. And that's simply happening because if I come here on your inputs, so the code is going from here to here. This is a procedural code. Of course, it, well, it's jumping over here and back and forth, but that's uh, the major part of your code is just jumping between here. And if no input is happening, all I was gonna do is execute this street code. So it's gonna load, start its values, and jump out of here. But for example, if it was to jump to this upright movement, for example, if you press uh, hold upright on your joysticks and come here to upright player zero. So you see there's this extra uh, instructions that you have over here and a reflecting player. And if you come over here during this horizontal frame, this is part of a macro. Oh, not my macro here it is still this all this extra code over here so when you're running our game oh, not over here not you running our game over here there's this all extra uh, lines that's happening over here and to fix that it's pretty easy I'm gonna kind of vertical blank and instead of having these scan lines over here all we're gonna do is add a timer oh a timer is pretty easy if you already covered on our Atari 2600 programming. So over here I have the desire number scan line, so it's 37 times 76, because 76 is the whole, how many CPU instructions it takes for a whole scan line. Get this value, let me copy this. So as you notice, it's bigger than 256, or 255, should I say. So if I were divided by eight, which is the next timer up, still not big enough, Refer to the divide by 64, you get this 43.93. Oh, you're gonna round it up to 44 because there's no integer mode on the 6502 or the 6507. 
Round it up. Gonna store that your timer. Here, let me bring this up. Here it is for different intervals. Uh, 1864 and 124. Uh, so uh, we we want the 164. I mean the 64. My bad. So here it is. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna copy this because I want this name. Delete this. And actually come over here. In a, let me put a here common fix fix common and right over here let me put start on vertical blank so let me come all the way down over here uh, where's here it is uh, and a vertical sync vertical I'll fix this later too so let's come over here a vertical blank I'm gonna load a register with our timer output oops timer output here it is I'm gonna check the timer and I'm gonna do a wait in sync get a new line and branch y not equal zero to our part over here so it's just gonna loop so we're gonna run all the code over here so let's say this uh, for example instead of 37 it's on line 20 so in nothing was press so it's gonna come over here and finish it off if it was for example line 26 over here it's gonna come over here and finish it off so we always gonna have this even number of frames so if I were to run our assembler over here come here for player one for player zero and you notice on the frame right over here I was noticing is intact and there's no uh, this extra frame it's extra going up and down if you remember it was moving so now it's stuck as it should be uh, so now you fix all the issues that you wanted and uh, just to finish it off let me come over here and I uh, commented this out because I don't really need it for now but I do need it some colors because I don't like to uh, both players zero and one are the exact same color so player one color let's capitalize to since it's a constant value never gonna change and I already have here open our my Tartan 600 color palette uh, let's do a red versus blue and uh, it's like common game uh, knowledge so there's four zero and eight zero so let's do that one. So you're gonna get the value four zero and player player one color equals eight zero. And it's so just gonna come over here doing our, our initializer or reset. Gonna load this our player zero color and store the your color and player luminosity player zero and of course you're gonna do the same thing for player one so b1 color and store that to my color luminosity player one so let me assemble this so here is a red versus blue and I'm, and I'm not really sure how this uh, the color palette is going to be. Uh, we're going to run the code and see how it comes out. So, no. so that's going to be towards the end of our uh, tutorial part. But uh, that's pretty much it for it. Uh, in the next video, I know I want to go over this window part that we have over here. As you notice, it's all this black part that we got over here. And we're going to separate it. So, a part of it, for example, right over here. Uh, actually, let me bring my draw tool over here. So we have over here. So let's get. Uh, so for example, this will be a, I don't know, my score. Then you have like here will be a little bit more some extra background, some extra background. Let me go back over here, and that's pretty much. So here's a score. So I want to be all the way on the top. Well, I'm just gonna cover all this in the next video, but. As you notice, it's just going to put different parts into 
our frame over here so we don't have this huge black line over here with nothing so let's just at least put something over there so that's what I'm in the vex video and uh, hopefully I put the ball there as well I'm gonna so we can actually start working our gameplay uh, so uh, let me minimize this and uh, that's pretty much it guys so that's gonna cover it for this video or the core part and so we fix everything everything is really nice and uh, see you guys in the next video thanks for watching guys see ya Thank you.